Hi, I'm so happy that you're here with me today. Today's topic, Luck Clean, MMM Track 4 Bars D 2048, which is a music transformer that I've published yesterday on Hugging Face. So there's another music model for you to, to use, to turn it into lovely music. So feel free to do something nice with it. In this video, I will do two things. I will guide you through a model card, explain you a little bit about the background of this model. And I also, in the second part, I will show you how to use the model in a collaboratory notebook. First and foremost, what are we talking about? This is GPT-2 for music, and it follows a very straightforward idea. And the idea is that if you invest a little effort, you can reduce the problem of music generation to the problem of text generation it means that if you have a music data set and you can manage to encode it as text tokens, then, well, you can generate tokens and thus generate music. It's GPT-2, so Generative Pre-trained Transformer, trained on the Luck Clean data set. The model itself generates four bars at a time with a 16th node resolution and is always in 4 to 4.4 four, four meter. On top of that, didn't write it here, it allows for multiple instruments at the same time. So multiple voices means it's, I would say, five to ten different, um, different voices at the same time. It's not a problem for this model. If you'd like to contribute or say hello, if you want to learn more, you find me all over the internet. You find me on LinkedIn, on, well, you've already found me on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter, on GitHub, and I'm twice on Hugging Face. And I will, well, you will find those links immediately. Here, most important thing for the second half of this video, you can run the model on Google Collaboratory. So this is a, a notebook that will show you how to download the model, how to use it for inference, and also how to, to turn the music into a format that you can listen to. License, well, feel free to use it, to use this model in any non-commercial context. Go wild. Go be creative, do something amazing with the model. If, on the other hand, you would like to turn it into a product, or you would, generally speaking, want to use it in a general, in a in a general commercial context, please write me a message so that we can discuss about licensing. Model description is GPT-2 with six decoders and eight attention heads. The sequence length is 2048. The embedding dimensions are 512. Just a couple of numbers for you, for us to get familiar with. The model family. Well, this model is part of a huge family of models that I've trained last year. First part of the family is the branch of Luck Clean. Luck Clean is a subset of a Luck dataset, and the subset has 15,000 MIDI files, so 15,000 songs. The model that I've trained, the model is available to you, has well, was trained on exactly that data set, and I did it a couple of variants. So here, a couple of variants, um, four bars and eight bars, four bars, four bars, four bars, eight bars. So this is like um, a dimension of different neural networks that I've trained. This one, MMM bar, has bar in painting, which means that if you have a piece of music and one bar in one instrument is missing, you can ask this neural network to generate that bar in painting. And also there is another model that is chord conditioned, which means you can provide or you can let the model generate a chord progression. And the model will also generate music that follows that chord progression. Here is this model, four bars resolution. Note density conditioning means that you can provide note densities for every track, like how many notes you expect to be generated in that track. Cool. Next one, bigger one, bigger brother. Luck full, 170,000 MIDI files, which is, well, quite a lot more than 10 times as much as the small Luck Clean data set. I've trained two models, four bars D2048 and four bars simple, which means it's just four bars, no conditioning whatsoever. This, on the other hand, is the bigger brother of the model we are talking about. Then smaller data set size, but quite quite powerful in a sense that there's one family or a branch of different models that have been trained on metal. 7,000 MIDI files from our own collection and you can do genre conditioning. So if you like to generate some fresh metal or some black metal, you can just ask the new network, please be so kind, generate some fresh metal or some black metal. I have four of those. So it's four bars, eight bars resolution, bar and track means 
you also have the in-painting or you have just the plane generation in a sequential manner. Now things are getting bigger. There's also the meta MIDI data set. I've trained it on sub-genres or genres in this data set. So there's Baroque music, there's classical music, there's a con collection of non-temporary music, there's even pop music and Renaissance music. Each trained with four bars, well, most are trained with eight bars, except for Baroque, where also have four bars, well, allows you to generate models in those genres. And finally, like the biggest guy on the block is, uh, is MetaMIDI dataset, the full one, which means 400,000 MIDI files and a trained MMM full MMM track four bars D2048, which is four bars resolution, no density. So it's the bigger, bigger brother of the model at hand. I also have the eight bars variant and finally a four bars variant where you also have chord conditioning. And that's the strongest model that I have. It means that you can ask the model to generate a chord progression, just symbolically, no notes yet. Or you can provide a chord progression as a prompt. And then the model would fill the chord progression with notes. It's very powerful. I use it in quite a lot of my own projects. Well, how to use? There will be a notebook and, well, limitation and bias, depending on what data set it's trained on, it will come with biases. So if you have a new network trained on Baroque, it's not going to generate Rammstein. Acknowledgement? Well, I'm very happy that last year NVIDIA gave me access to DGX, which allowed me to do a lot of deep learning. So there was three months in my life that I spent like almost full time training one neural network after the other. First, it was quite I say it's challenging because I trained on small data sets and they converged almost instant instantly. And later I had way bigger data sets going up to almost, I think 250 gigabytes of data. So it took one and a half weeks to train one of these models. So thank you very much, NVIDIA. So that's the first part. That's what we are dealing about, um, dealing with. There are a couple of new networks available. Um, no, there are a couple of new networks and one of those is available now. How to use? Well, going up again, Google Collaboratory, there's a link. When you click this link, you come here. And then, well, let me just guide you through. Installs a couple of dependencies, which is very, very crucial. If you'd like to run it locally mm, on your own computer, it should work. This is compatible with Unix. Um, I have no clue how you can set it up on um, Windows, but I know you will find out. On Mac, it's a little bit more complicated, but well, you also find out. It needs Transformers, which is from Hugging Face, the big Transformers library, and also NoteSec, which is from Google Magenta. It is a module that allows you to generate MIDI files, to manipulate them in a sense of that you have node sequences that you can work with. Here, it's very straightforward. I mean, it's the most important stuff, I would say. You first need a tokenizer, which means something that can take uh, music represented as text and map it to tokens that BAI, the model, can operate on, and also vice versa. You have some output of a neural network. You can decode it into some text, which is cool, but it's not that helpful as we're going to see in a moment. So let us run this one to download the tokenizer and the model. There you go. If you do it for a first time, it might take a moment because it has to download the checkpoint. If you do it once, it's it's already in the cache, so next time will be easier. Here, crucial part. Been, I've been talking about the idea that you can map music to text and vice versa, and this is the music to text and vice versa part. If you get a token sequence, um, you might still go through a couple of motions in order to listen to it. A note sequence at the end of the day is just a string. Um, which contains those node events. And in order to decode it, I have provided you a token sequence to node sequence. A node sequence basically is something like a MIDI file. So let's do this. We start with a simple token. This is our prompt. So no fancy prompt engineering whatsoever. We just start with P start. Means all the songs start with this token. There you go. And then we have this cell here. And what a cell does is it encodes it into a PyTorch format, the entire generated sequence, which is now pstart. This is something that the AI can work with. We also have an end token ID, means that there's one token. Once it has been generated, we stop with that one. 
we have some temperature, which is the degree of randomness, and then, well, we have the model and we just call generate. That's how you would do it all the time in hugging face transformers. We use the input IDs, which were generated from the generated sequence, max length, the upper length. We do sampling with temperature, which means there is some randomness involved. If you go up with a temperature, you will have more randomness. If you go down, it will be a little bit more monotonous. And then also we're going to stop at once we hit track end, means that hopefully, fingers crossed, when we run this, this model will generate one voice of a piece of music. And here, it is um, using the, the, the definition from above, going from a token sequence to a node sequence. It's fine. And then this node se sequence we can render with a synthesizer. And the synthesizer is fluid synth. This is the one that causes a little trouble when you have to install this. Um, and this is the opening the door towards sonification. Again, this model just generates the node events, which you can read but you cannot listen to. It's not an audio generator. It's a music, symbolic music generator. And in order to listen to it, you have to sonify it. One way to do it is fluid synth, but there are way more other ways to do it. And hopefully in the near future, give or take one or two years, we'll have end-to-end -end neural networks that will, well, use, um, that will, those will be models that generate the audio for you without any fancy things around that. So let's run that cell. So first generating a piece of music, there you go, and then mapping it to a to a note sequence and then showing the note sequence, plotting it and then playing it. And playing means you get this tiny little widget. So it's going into a certain direction. I'm quite excited about well, how we can continue this. I mean, now we have a node sequence. Obviously, the neural network has generated something like a MIDI file. And here's a little hint. Run the following cell multiple times to generate more tracks. So we are not overwriting the generated sequence. The generated sequence now is this here, P start, track start, ins, and so on and so forth. After some time dealing with those, you, well, you grow accustomed to reading it, actually. And we are now going to use this entire sequence as a prompt. If we run it again, there you go. We get another sequence here. Looks like a bass to me. Let's run that one. Okay, I was wrong. No bass. That word it runs. Let's do this one more time. Mm -hmm. Now we get a little more. Okay, so added more drums. Let's start from scratch. Now empty again. Let's generate the first track. What is this? Ah, this is cool. Let's generate one more track on top of that one. Ah, look at this. Come on, one more. Ah, drums. This is so cool. That's always my problem. When I run the AI, I get inspired and I like to turn this into a whole song. But maybe this is going to inspire you as well. So long story short, there's a model for you to use, trained on the Luck Clean data set. It's on Hugging Face. Here is a notebook that shows you how to use this. And well, now it boils down to, well, now, if you're curious, if you're excited about this, go wild with prompt engineering and also find other ways to sonify this music. So for example, just save the MIDI file on your hard drive, run it through Logic Pro, Cubase, Ableton, and all the other digital audio workstations that are available and turn it into great songs. If you have something nice, just show it to me. I'll be happy to see what you're doing with this model. So it's the, well, this is the community aspect. I've learned so much from this whole AI and AI music um, and AI creativity community that I'm so grateful that there's no way I had to publish this new network. So please go wild, do something nice with it. And if you do something great, share it with the entire public. Thank you.